to roll. Take one. Teenagers from Mars and Children in Need. All right, Syracuse Music Collective. I'm here at France Coma's house in Lodi, New Jersey. It's a first off. Thank you for taking the time, you know, no to problem. sit and talk with me. Now, you're one of the original guitarists for the Misfits, and kind of take us take us back a little bit, ways and like describe how you got into the band and what was it being in the band like back then. Well, basically, I was friends with Jerry, which I still am. We've been friends, I think, since we're probably. Ten years old, maybe. You know, his uh, Jerry's Jerry's grandmother left, lived next door to my wife, mm -hmm. a couple of blocks from here. So uh, basically, Jerry was um, Jerry started playing with Glenn and Manny at the time, and uh, he and I were friends, and they were gonna, you know, as, as you know, Glenn was playing keyboards, and uh, basically, uh, you know, Jerry said I knew a guitar player, and I guess Glenn, you know, they were thinking about Jerry. Jerry Glenn was thinking about getting a guitar player. So that's how it all kind of started. I came down, rehearsed a few songs, then made my debut at Eddie's Lounge in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey. Did a half a set with them one night. In the beginning there, I mean, punk was kind of like a like a new, it just started hitting New York. It came across from England. Now, how would you describe like the punk scene then? It was real. Right. It's not all this phony makeup shit that goes on today that you see. I mean, it was the real deal. When people said they were, you know, maybe, you know, Living on the streets and and rebelling, they were. It was real. So you're unlike like today. It was, it was actual a lifestyle. It meant something. Whereas today, it's almost in a way kind of like a like a fashion statement. Today, it is a fashion statement. It's just too like you know like to me, everybody's copying what we did back then. All right. You know, but this is the real. That was the real deal. All right. Now, describe Lodi back in the late '70s when you you guys were starting to get together. I mean, I mean, how much has it changed since? Well, Lodi's changed a lot. I mean, the culture's changed a lot. It's different today. I mean, I'm still in Lodi, of course, as you said, you know. I mean, but, you know, everybody was pretty close, you know. It was a tight-knit, um, uh, you know, everybody knew everybody, so to speak, you know. Everybody was pretty tight, you know. Uh, you know, it was predominantly a, I guess, the best way to put it was an Italian town, mostly. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, nothing, no, no racist remarks against anyone then or now, past or present. Um, so it was, you know, it was pretty cool. It's still pretty cool, but I mean, it was different back then. It was good, you know. All right. Now, one of the areas of the, you know, that Misfits era that was always kind of fascinating to me is what I, I mean. I like to call it, and some other people call it, like the Static Age, which is kind of like, in my opinion, there's not a lot known about it. I mean, because it's just still in its very infancy. Now, obviously, the band went through a lot of changes from that, you know, from the late '70s up until you know their sort of unofficial end in '83. Right. And. Um, <clears throat> How did you see it, you know, the progression of the band? You know, it went from, I mean, the non, like, horror essay, and, and at what point did you start noticing this transition? Well, basically, like I said, when I joined the band, it was three-piece. It was Glenn, Jerry, and Manny, Glenn playing keyboards. Right. Doing songs that you guys probably never heard of. <laughs> probably. Out that, you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, different things. Some, some stuff you've heard of, but some things, you know, like one song comes to mind, West End Avenue, I remember them doing it. Okay. But anyway... Um, from there, we, you know, it evolved a little bit. I became a guitar player. You know, obviously now you have that different sound than a keyboard playing to a fuzz. You know, so basically, um, you know, we were doing a lot of a lot of the Static Age stuff. Some of the some of the post stuff that you hear at the, hear out there today, I actually played on. Um, that's not on the Static Age album that I just didn't record. Right. You know, um, then from there, when I left the band, as far as I know. And I probably know as much as you. Um, you know, they went. They they started going into the horror end of the uh, mm -hmm. of the of the scene, and that's I left the band just before that. And horror so you, punk, if you will. Right. So it's kind of like that's when they started moving into the horror punk thing. Yeah. So you know, it wasn't immediately when I left the band, but I would say within six months to a year tops. Tops. So so you would say it's like from the beginning until where it wound up, they went through a lot of like stylistic changes, even. Well, yeah, like, I mean, the music was the same. I mean, the core of the music was the same. The lyrics, what Glenn was writing about, was the same. I think the music was very good. Um, you know, some things were changed. I mean, like, for giving a perfect example, when, yeah. when they were doing a song, who, you know, Who Killed Marilyn, I played it with them. Oh, nice. When I was playing the guitar, when we were doing the song originally, I was playing a slide guitar on it. The chorus, oh, wow. was, the chorus was completely different than it is today. I mean, it was, you know, we used to... Uh, Glenn, uh, I believe, yeah, I don't know, Glenn and Jerry or Jerry and I, but you know, it ain't a mystery, a funny, funny mystery. Then we go up, it ain't a mystery, funny, funny mystery, yep. it ain't a mystery, you know, oh, like wow. that. So it was a little bit different. Enough. I was playing some slide on there, but for whatever reason, when I left the band, the guitar player after me, they changed it up and just changed it a little bit. All 
right. It's just an example that I remember. So it's fair to say that you weren't really into that, that where they're heading with the horror element then. Listen, not that I wasn't into it. The bottom line was, I mean, I left the band on my own terms. Right. Okay, basically. Um, if you ask me, am I into the horror stuff? No, I'm not right. into horror movies. They don't do anything for me. I'm not saying they're not cool, or I wouldn't go to a convention if there was something going on right. and hang around. But it's not something that really floats my boat. I have a lot of other things that kind of <laughs> I get more out of. Yeah, so, fair. you know. Where they, when they, everybody started out, I mean, did you ever would think here it is almost going, let's see, 40 years later, which, yeah, 2017 would be almost like a good year, would it be as huge or as influential as it, as, as it became? Well, like I said, we started out, you know, myself, then Manny left the band and Mr. Jim came in, which we did the Static Age on. If I would have known today what I know then, I never would have left the band. <laughs> you know, I left the band for you and I could do different things and I wasn't, you know, I saw yeah. I'd rather I could do this. I left and went to play with a friend of mine. Who knew? I'll be honest with you, Glenn really had the insight of what was going on and you know what? Sometimes you should just keep your mouth shut and go with the flow. <laughs> I'll be straight up with you. But, yeah. you know, again, you learn things, you know, we sometimes we learn the hard way. Yeah. But unfortunately it didn't happen that way. Now, would have things still evolved the same way? Would have Doyle taken over our guitar? Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe right. not. I don't know that. But if I would have known, like I said, what I know now. No, I wouldn't have left the band. I, think, I don't think Jim would have left the band either. We would have stuck together and see where it went. Because right. we had a following. We played in, we played some nice places with some pretty nice crowds. Right. Now, going back to the, like, the whole Static Age recordings, like, what was your favorite song to play on it? Or, or songs? I'll I tell you what, I like the whole, I like the whole album. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, Teenagers from Mars is a great song, as you know. Yeah. Um, um, yeah theme for Jackal, which people doesn't get a lot of airplay, you don't even airplay, doesn't get a lot of play at all, oh, it's a pretty yeah. dif different type of a song, if you listen to that, that was cool to do, I mean I really like the whole album, if you ask me to give me one favorite song, I won't say there's one favorite one, but obviously Bullet was the single off of there, right. the first single, you know, with Hollywood on the flip side and Attitude, uh, but um, the whole album was pretty cool. Now if anybody, you know, starting out, you know, like saying, you know, oh I'm going to pick up a guitar and I want to do something, what would be your best advice to them? Or do a bass, it. you know. Do it. <laughs> do it. Fair don't enough. let anybody. Uh, don't let anybody let anybody tell you. Oh, don't do this. Don't do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't. If you feel it, do it. Because you just don't know. All right. Well, I'd like to, you know, thank you for taking the time, you know, to, you know, have me in your home, take the time to talk with me. It's, you know, for me it's you, Johnny, because you know I'm a huge fan of the Misfits and, cool. and the music and everything. So again, thank you.